happy day students this is srinivas chemistry teacher students still we have discussed about the carbon family so carbon family related to p block elements so which is useful for uh, neat and je mains especially inorganic chemistry you can revise from your ncert textbook first first you can throw that ncert textbook after that you can focus on the class notes and the practice previous competitive examination questions so first you can throw this concept after that you can practice so last sessions we have discussed about carbon family introduction and uh, periodic properties and physical properties how that halide undergoes hydrolysis and how they react with water so this session i am going to discuss about allotropes of carbon so you know already about this already you had studied in lower classes also it is not a new topic so today this session we are going to discuss about allotropes so first what is the meaning of allotropy 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 is nothing but compounds having similar chemical properties but they show they form different physical forms that is called allotropy for example if you take carbon carbon exists in different physical forms but it shows same chemical property on oxidation it gives carbon dioxide molecule so here this session i am going to discuss about uh, carbon allotropes so carbon have two type of allotropes one is uh, crystalline allotrope one is crystalline allotrope and one is uh, amorphous allotrope you know amorphous allotrope so especially carbon black this carbon black especially used in uh, xerox machines as a black powder so to to ink me to make ink bottles and ink in that case for black color we are using black powder so that is nothing but carbon black and uh, animal charcoal coconut charcoal animal charcoal and coconut charcoal so different type of charcoals are related to this amorphous form of the carbon allotropes of carbon now coming to crystalline allotropes of carbon here graphite graphite diamond and fullerenes so these are the crystalline allotropes of carbon okay students so in examination they will ask about the allotrope so allotrope is nothing but compounds having same chemical properties they show same chemical properties but different physical forms exist in different physical forms these are called allotrope so this session carbon allotropes i will discuss one by one about graphite and diamond and fullerene so get ready okay students first we are going to discuss about graphite graphite see here this is a hexagonal ring this forms hexagonal rings like this students so this is considered as one layer and this is one more hexagonal ring this is considered as a second layer okay students so from this dia diagram what we observed what we observed from this diagram we observe that they exist in the form of layer it is a layer structure so it is a two dimensional layer structure it is a two dimensional layer structure and uh, here between layers weak van der waals forces exist between the layers weak van der waals forces exist like this like this weak van der waals forces exist so here one layer due to this weak van der waals forces one layer slided over the other layer so that's why this graphite compound is a soft substance and it is acts as a lubricant it acts as a lubricant because of that uh, nature of the softness because of this intermolecular forces and uh, here you can see one corner represent one one carbon atom so here one carbon atom is surrounded by three other carbon atoms 
So like this, it is surrounded by three other carbon atoms. So it is sp2 hybridization. You can see this explanation, carbon Z is equal to 6. In ground state, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2 electronic configuration. This is your ground state electronic configuration. Like this. 2s2, 2p2 electronic configuration. Now, in excited state, in excited state what happens? This s orbital electron is promoted to vacant pz orbital. So finally it becomes 2s1, 2px1, 2py1 and 2pz1. So finally it is uh, form the structure like this students. Okay, so each carbon has four unpaired electron. Each carbon has four unpaired electron. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now this carbon atom is bonded to neighboring carbon atom, neighboring carbon unpaired electron. Overlap with neighboring carbon atom unpaired electron. Overlap with neighbor carbon atom unpaired electron. So finally, it forms um, three bonds. So it undergoes sp2 hybridization. Remember the students. In graphite, diamond undergoes which type of hybridization? In graphite, diamond, uh, in graphite, carbon, in graphite, carbon undergoes which type of hybridization? Here it undergoes sp2 hybridization. So that point you can remember. So it is sp2 hybridization. So each carbon is surrounded by three other carbon atoms and it forms hexagonal layer structure. Right? So it forms a trigonal planar like this. And here, one unpaired electron is there students one pair one unpaired electron is there so because of this unpaired electron due to mobility of this unpaired electron due to delocalization of this unpaired electron it shows conducting nature so this is a good conductor of heat and electricity why because due to delocalization of unpaired electron so every carbon have one one unpaired electron one one unpaired electron so these unpaired electrons are delocalizing so due to delocalization of electrons it conducts electricity so that's why it is a good conductor of electricity so graphite is a good conductor of electricity so this is one important point students now here if you compare the distance here we observe two type of bond length students two type of bond lengths see here carbon to carbon one type of bond length this is approximately 144 picometers this is one type of bond length and uh, this layer to this layer distance here here one layer and here one layer so layer to layer distance that is 3.3 uh, angstroms okay here one type of bond length is there and inside internally carbon to carbon one type of bond length is there so here it shows two type of bond lengths so that point you can remember so in examination they will ask the question which of the following compounds shows two type of different bond lengths so remember graphite and the diamond shows different bond length so in examination they will give assertion and reason graphite and diamond among these two which shows different bond lengths graphite diamond shows only one bond length so next concept I will explain about the diamond. So these are the important points about graphite students. So here you focus on a uh, few points. One is why it acts as a soft substance and why it is used as lubricant. And uh, it is also used in make pencils also, you know. Percentage of lead in pencil is zero. That point is given in previous complete examination. Graphite contains the carbon atoms only. So they will ask the question, in lead pencil, what is the percentage of lead? Lead percentage is zero. So like that, simple questions they will ask. And here, this explains uh, about why it is a soft substance due to weak vulnerable forces. And uh, why it is a good conductor due to delocalization of unpaired electrons. So these points you can focus. So this is uh, enough for graphite structure. Okay, students. Next. Next, uh, I am going to discuss about uh, diamond. Next, I am going to discuss about uh, diamond. Let's uh, look at the structure students. Like this, you can practice. 
V for victory, V for victory, V for victory. So like this you can practice students. So here by looking this diagram you observe one type of layer structure. You observe that one type of structure. So inside we have one type of structure, tetrahedral structure. You observe here the tetrahedral structure. So this is in the form of tetrahedral structure students. If you consider this is the carbon atom. So each carbon atom. So here each carbon atom is surrounded by four other carbon atoms. Each carbon atom surrounded by four other carbon atoms tetrahedrally. So this is one type of sp3 hybridization. This is one type of sp3 hybridization. So because of that sp3 hybridization, it shows tetrahedral shape. You can take the excited state electronic configuration. Excited state here 2s1, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1. So 2s1, 2px1, 2py1, 2pz1. All the unpaired electrons involved in hybridization, that's why it undergoes sp3 hybridization. There is no unpaired electron here. So because of that, it is a bad conductor of electricity. Have you observed the difference between diamond and graphite? In diamond, there is no unpaired electron, that's why it is a bad conductor. In graphite, because of presence of unpaired electron, it shows good conductive, good conducting nature. So it acts as an insulator. And uh, you can see here, this is sp3 hybridization. Here we can observe only one type of bond length, carbon-carbon bond length. So that bond length is 154 picometers. And uh, this is a hard substance students. This is a hard substance. So you can focus on this one. Why it is hard substance? Because Due to strong sigma, due to strong sigma CC covalent bonds. Sigma covalent bonds are there. See here. So because of that strong sigma CC covalent bonds, it is a hard substance. Right. And uh, it is also used as abrasives. So this question is given in uh, previous one. What is the meaning of abrasive? The substance which is used to sharpen the sharpening the hard tools that is called abrasive so this uh, sharpening the hard tool hard tools so diamond used as abrasive and also you know about that these diamonds also used in jewelries because of transparent properties so like this they will ask about the structure students remember here Diamond undergoes sp3 hybridization and it is a hard substance and used as abrasives and uh, used in jewelries because of transparent property and uh, high refractive index values. This is about diamond student. Next one I am going to discuss about fullerenes. Fullerenes. So you can see in the structure of fullerenes. So it is looking like a buckyball shape students. So actually carbon 60 is there. So this carbon 60 is known as Buckminster fullerenes. So the scientist name Buckminster. So that's why it is called Buckminster fullerene. So not only 660, we have different different types of um, uh, fullerenes C60, C70 and uh, uh, up to three, uh, carbon 350. We have the compounds. So this is called Buckminster fullerene. C60 is called Buckminster fullerene. Fullerene because of harder of this Buckminster. These are called Buckminster fullerene. These are cage like structure. Cage like structure. And it is a buckyball shape. That's why it is a. It is called Buckminster fullerene. It is looking like a volleyball, it is looking like a football. Right? Now, now, now you can see here, this carbon 60 contains 60 vertices. It contains 60 vertices. That's why it is called carbon 60. 
okay students right now you can look at the diagram it is easy to understand here total number of uh, hexagonal rings 20 hexagonal rings are there 20 hexagonal rings so like this 20 hexagonal rings are there and uh, 12 uh, pentagonal rings are there 12 pentagonal rings so like this pentagonal structure if it is surrounded by six vertices that is called hexagonal ring six member ring is called hexagonal ring if it is surrounded by five carbon atoms that is called uh, five member rings so like this uh, it shows uh, hexagonal rings as well as uh, pentagonal rings and uh, if you compare the structure hexagonal ring surrounded by if you compare the structure hexagonal ring surrounded by hexagonal ring as well as uh, five member ring like this hexagonal ring as well as five member ring okay students see here see here so this is surrounded by hexagonal ring as well as five member ring now look at this example look at this example students this is uh, uh, one example to, uh, to show buckminster fuller in so here this yellow color this yellow color represents five member rings see here five member rings are there here five member rings are there and uh, you can see here so here it uh, shows a six member ring so like this here five member ring surrounded by only six member ring if you look at this diagram this uh, five member ring surrounded by only six member ring see here this is six member ring and here also six member ring six member ring so this five member ring surrounded by six member ring but a six member ring this is a, uh, this blue color this blue color represents a six member ring this six member ring is surrounded by both five member ring as well as a six member ring so this blue color surrounded by blue color as well as yellow color so you can compare with uh, uh, this ball example uh, you can see in our home also you can easily identify that okay students so this is about buckminster fullerene so in buckminster fullerene uh, we have we have 20 hexagonal rings and 12 pentagonal rings and here we have two different bond lengths why because you can see this diagram in this diagram carbon surrounded by three carbon atoms carbon surrounded by three carbon atoms so it is sp2 hybridization and one unpaired electron is there that unpaired electron combined with another unpaired electron to form pi bond pi bond it is looking like a benzene structure so it shows aromatic property it shows aromatic property like benzene structure due to alternative pi bonds so from this diagram what we observed carbon shows double bond character as well as single bond character so here two type of bond lengths are there carbon carbon single bond length and carbon carbon double bond length if you look at this uh, uh, bond lengths carbon carbon single bond length is 148.143.5 uh, picometers and uh, if you compare the carbon carbon double bond length here 138.3 picometers it shows different bond lengths why because because of unpaired electron due to mobility of unpaired electron it shows pi bond character also it shows pi bond character also so this is the important point students and uh, among all the allotropes